The African Regional Data Cube was formally launched on Thursday in the Kenyan capital. This is a new tool that expects to harness the latest uh, tech in Earth observation and satellite technology. Now, the data gathered from this process should help Kenya, Senegal, Sierra Leone, Ghana and Tanzania to address challenges in food security as well as other things like water access and deforestation too. The launch will be followed by an in-depth training process for government representatives and the people will generally be running this program as well. So let's dig a little deeper into how all of this uh, will work in detail. Aditya Agrawal is the director of the Data Ecosystems Development Team at the Global Partnership for Sustainable Development Data. He joins me in the studio right now. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. So let's just start with this, with this idea, African Regional Data Cube. It's focusing on agriculture, forestry issues, water issues. But to break, explain it to me like a two-year-old. What exactly will it do? So if you can imagine your entire landscape and basically you have numbers associated with that landscape and you're able to analyze uh, images of what the landscape looks like, there's a lot of insights that you're able to get from that information. And often the, the thing that's most difficult about satellite data is that usually it takes about 80 to 90% of the time that's spent on that data is spent on trying to get the data just ready to be processed. What the Africa Regional Data Cube and Open Data Cubes in general do is that they basically stack about 20 years of data on top of one another and it's all analytically ready and openly accessible. So to put it in machine learning terms, it's, it's, it's not dirty, unstructured information. Yeah. It's something you can feed into an algorithm and tell it, okay, I want to know what water flow has been like in this area for the last 10, 5, 15 years. Exactly, right. exactly. It's a very robust, scalable platform mm -hmm. and the power of it is that um, you have easy access to it and you're able to apply those algorithms very quickly and make them open across users. So this sounds like a very strong use case for things like machine learning yes. um, and recognition of information, essentially by algorithms, right out of images that we feed them. That's right, right. that's exactly okay. right. So what sort of remote sensing inputs are you using here aside from just satellites? Because one of the things we do see here is that there are a lot of interesting ideas uh, where people are trying to play around with drones, yeah. for example. Um, we fly a green Cote d'Ivoire doing something interesting on that front. Uh, we're seeing drones being used for logistics over in Tanzania and in Rwanda. Are drones part of this as well? Currently, no, but they can be. Mm -hmm. So um, currently, this is the, uh, the data cube that's being developed by the Committee on Earth Observation Satellites. Uh, what it's using right now is basically the Landsat data that's developed through NASA, through the U.S. space program. Uh, we're going to then include Sentinel data, which is from the European Space Agency. Um, but functionally, uh, it can bring in any kind of georeference uh, data. And so drones can definitely go into that if we have access to drones, drone data. And part of what we want to be able to do is create this data cube infrastructure in a way that it can also then connect to other systems. So for example, we've also been in conversations with another group called Radiant Earth, um, who's in the process of bringing drone data into their platform. Mm -hmm. And because these systems will be interoperable and we have partnerships that are developing, then you can have those systems talk to one another and take advantage of the data that resides in each system. Right, so following up on that though, I mean, if, if I'm a farmer, for example, I'm a large scale farmer, say, working on wheat, for argument's sake, um, in Wasangishu in Western Kenya, how then can I tap into the wealth of information available from all these data sources you mentioned, Landsat in the US, Sentinel in, 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 in the EU? It sounds to me like there's, there's a huge data trove out there, yeah. but it's not in a format that we ordinary people can access. Exactly, so you know, the, the, the real trick of being able to apply the data cube is the applications that get developed around it. And so, you know, in the smallholder farmer or large scale farmer kind of situation, where this can go right now is that with this, the resolution of the data that currently exists in the data cube, it's really going to be able to inform better decisions around national development policies. Mm -hmm. So being able to get a good indication of what is the distribution of agricultural land look like, uh, what is the health of the crops that are within those uh, uh, dis uh, agricultural lands. And then once we're able to bring in more granular data like weather information, precipitation, soils, then you're getting a little bit more granular and a little bit more real time. And so the idea would be that once you're able to make this infrastructure available and governments are able to access it and share that data across business applications, across, uh, across institutions, then you get private sector, civil society, 
farming organizations also involved to better understand what the requirements are and then you can imagine how these applications that get built that will then inform farmers about the data not the raw data but the, the analyzed data that comes out of that that helps them make better decisions on a day-to-day -day basis about best practices what are the current conditions what are the market values and so on I, I could sit here and talk about this all day but unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> we've got we've got to leave it there for the time being but Aditya thank you for your time okay thank you for having me